So my travels through Carnoustie country continue, and this time they take me to Forfa. But first off, it's a stop in the high street. For what is a regional delicacy, it's the Forfa Bridie, and an important head-to-head -head is coming up later in today's video. But for the time being, let's get back to the golf course. And a layout that can be attributed to old Tom Morris and James Braid. And hopefully I can manage a few four for birdies, as well as those four for brideys. But back onto sort of where we are today, four for golf club. Yep, uh, welcome. What we here? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks for coming. No, well the sun's shining, and I like I say, I look forward to getting there very shortly. Anything you can sort of tell me about it before we we, we venture out there? Yeah, absolutely. There's uh, Forfar's got a great wee history. Uh, to be honest, it's something we sat on for about 147 years. But we're uh, we recently found out we're the oldest 18-hole golf course from inception. Yes. Uh, so there was there was golf courses that were like seven holes, 24 holes, uh, 12 holes, and then. Uh, rearranged into an 18 hole yes. layout but Tom Morris came over from St Andrews uh, and laid this one out as an 18 hole setup right from the very beginning right. and we're still here and operating so it's, uh, it's a nice little yeah. historical accolade to have. And is, it, is it a Heathland course? You it's a Heathland course, well? yeah. yeah yeah absolutely We're this time of year the heather's out and mm. uh, in full bloom and during the summer time when you get nice dry weather like this we kind of burn up and get a real kind of linksy feel to yes, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're now tree lined uh, as well which kind of Gives each hole their own little individual definition. Kind of, one of you. Yeah, shape. yeah. So it, but it's lovely out there. It's a super wee course to play. More to come from Stuart later on and his incredible amateur career. Right, first hole at Forfa. We've got a uh, another crowd awaiting a shot down the middle. Let's see if I can do better than I did the other day at Bankery. Well, we're down the left, but we're away. Oh, Stu, you've just seen the first tee shot. Well, do you think I might sneak in for 2021? <laughs> 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 So fourth hole is a really interesting one. You really start to see some dips. It's uh, it's a roller coaster ride, and uh, playing into this fourth green, you see massive drop off in front of the green that you're seeing coming up to me now. Huge big green, but again, it's all about getting that club selection right, where um, you're coming into elevated tee position from an elevated position on the fairway, and obviously club selection is difficult and then throw a bit of wind in as well so it's uh, not an easy hole but a real tight and interesting hole to play that one loved it right we have a chance of a four for birdie and a couple of chances to be fair come roll out roll out ah oh, do you know what i've been uh, i've played all right throughout this scottish series some good days, some bad days, but uh, I've not really old many putts. Right, you can see the eighth hole behind us, um, which again, those rolling fairways are a key feature on every hole I've played so far. It's a fairly tight uh, par four, but again, not overly long. We're playing downwind, however, and I think a lot of it is about strategy around here rather than just picking up driver off every tee, finding that tee position, and then making your way into what are fairly substantial greens as well, uh, even though I am a fairway away from the pin. Back to 2003, which was uh, a bit of a year for you. Yeah, 2003 was a, a special year. Um, the, highlight, the highlight of the year was the, the Walker Cup yes. down at Ganton, uh, which we were fortunate enough to win. win yeah. uh, it was a very tight match, exciting match. Yeah, yeah. Um, it got good viewings on the telly, so yeah, that was yeah. nice. But uh, 
No, it was the third year or the third Walker Cup match in a row as well that uh, GB and I had actually gone on to win. So it was a, a bit of a historical uh, moment. And during well. that match, I think you collected a couple of points yourself, wasn't it? During that, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I managed to get points out of three of my matches. Yeah. Just lost one, two halves, and a, and a win. So Very yeah, good. it was nice to be able to contribute to yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, and then the following year, it was the Amateur Championship at St Andrews. Absolutely, yeah. And then the silver medal. At Royal Troon. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's another special year. Nice yeah, yeah. Year stuff back to back. Obviously, a, a great experience. Just playing in the amateur is a great experience to, to go on to win it and then win it in the 250th anniversary of the RNA yeah. at St. and at St Andrews was a, a couldn't have picked a better yeah, year to actually moment. to yeah. actually win it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then it was nice to get another week off work after that, cur <laughs> yeah, courtesy yeah. of uh, being an invitee to the Open, and then going on to play all four rounds and pick up the silver medal. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, it was uh, what a, something I, we'll always cherish. Yeah, I, am, I, say, I assume that's the highlight of the amateur career, and no doubt you've got lots of other things to talk about, but then we jump sort of, uh, what is it, 16 years on, mm -hmm. and you're now going to captain Great British and Ireland yeah. team into what will be 2021 and the, uh, the World Cup over in America. That's right, yeah, I was fortunate enough to be asked to be captain, which... Uh, to be honest, it was probably something I was secretly hoping for for a oh, number of years nice, and yeah. things. So, um, uh, terms eventually come around. So, uh, really looking forward to it. It's just unfortunate it's kind of come at these, mm. this, time this time where yeah. we're uh, struggling to get uh, international events played yeah, and get yeah. the guys travelling around playing what they normally do. But we're, we're putting contingency plans in and in, looking in at right. things for. Uh, getting our preparation right for May 2021 yeah, out yeah. in Florida. Oh, well, I wish you all the best with that. I hope it uh, goes, goes as well as the amateur career has oh. gone. Fantastic. Right, I'm not sure how many par threes uh, we featured in terms of on a camera as yet, but uh, there's certainly a feature of the course. Another one on the ninth, uh, 155. Great backdrop. I mean, it's hard to believe that, and I don't know exactly how long ago, no trees on this course at, uh, at one point in its life, and very much a flat and barren landscape. And now, obviously, uh, those trees are literally, well, it's tree-lined fairways throughout the 18 holes. Um, but again, nice feature, nice backdrop into this par three. it down the left we're gonna miss the green on the left hand side am I yeah oh hang on hang on well uh, you probably won't pick that up on camera it's just literally cambered off the left hand side and uh, ended up back on the green so I'll take that and what I didn't mention when I said it came off a camber it was either come off this camber and back in or into a burn that runs literally parallel with the green from front to back so I certainly got lucky and uh, a nice little feature on a par 3 that adds to it quite a bit to be fair right enough of that waffle birdie time or maybe miss again ah I'm racking up a lot of pars but uh not holding any birdie putts. Right, it's challenge time. It's man versus golf hole challenge. It's the 12th hole, 420 yards, and yet it's stroke one. So I picked a right one to uh, throw down the gauntlet with, but we are down breeze a bit. I think it's very much about this tee shot. If I can get one chasing down the middle, I'm driving the ball well so far. Oh, that's a good ball. Is that a bunker waiting for it? Maybe that's, that's got to be a long way away, surely. I can't quite get that one coming down, but we're down the left-hand side, and uh, it's a decent enough start, and we'll see what awaits. Right, so just got yardage, uh, one four one in. Uh, I'm going to uh, take a wedge, it's quite a bit down breeze. Um, decent enough drive, and like I said, we're only a couple of yards to the left, and you're into the, uh, you're into the heather. So you can see why it's stroke one, it's fairly tight. Right. That's bang on line. It's just about that distance now. Come on, get up. I need to see that ball. No. Nope. Yes. Yeah, not bad. It's just obviously, I don't know, you might have seen it. It might have just fed off slightly off down the right-hand side. Uh, it's a birdie chance, but it's a, it's a long birdie chance. But I can't get the short one, so you never know. I might hold this one. Right, well, do you know what? I think that's probably done better than I thought it did from back there. I knew it was gonna bound on a bit, but uh, it's a chance. It's a chance, but can we, or can I rather, 
get a ball rolling at the hole and give it half a chance. Come on. Stroke one, first birdie. No. No. Yet again, a uh, week in terms of uh, the pace and uh, it was never going to get there once it was falling away up that hill. So it's, uh, it's a par, I'd have took that on the tee any day of the week, but uh, yeah, that birdie is still eluding me. I keep picking up on the par threes, but uh, oh, very nice. Right, another chance at the elusive birdie. And the irony would be if I all this, I've literally duffed a nine iron that's fed itself right down to here. Worst iron shot of the day. And, uh, oh my word, it is as well. I, oh, it stayed out. Ah, oh, I don't like these COVID flags. Wow, that was bang in the middle. In a way, I'm glad it didn't go in after that nine iron, but I can't believe it didn't. Ah, another par. I can't believe that. Yeah. Right, the moment you've all been waiting for, forget the golf. It's not about four for birdies. It's about four, four for brideys. That wasn't easy to say. It's McLarens versus Saddlers. I don't know which way to start with this. I should point out these are both short crust. There is a, uh, what's the other name of the other pastry? I'm getting uh, mind flaky is the other one. But anyway, these are short crust. It's mince and onion, by the way. I know a lot of you tuned in for this now, which is a key feature to the channel. Watching me taste delicacies around Scotland. Well, maybe I have to just um, forward this on a bit quick because I'm going to need to take a, another bite to give it a fair assessment. Whatever the name of the pastry, by the way, it's lovely. Right, so that's the McLaren's. I could do with some water to swirl around my mouth to clear my palate, cleanse my palate. Now this is a, this is a lot bigger in size from Sadler's. Whether or not that option is available from uh, McLaren's, I don't know. Don't sue me, McLaren's. Okay. Right. Now then, I'd like to be diplomatic, but the, when I'm looking down at the bag again, Sadler's is the clear winner for me. Clear's a bit harsh, but it's far tastier. There's a bit more salt in this, I think, as well. I can taste on the outside of this pastry. And the filling is a little bit softer and it's delightful. So the winner of the Bridie Off goes to Sadler's. Well done, Sadler's. Bit of pepper as well. That's delightful, that one.
finally that elusive birdie I don't even know what hole we're on is it 16? <laughs> oh my word Golf was finished, it was Saturday night and time to check into Mount Mason on Dundee's waterfront. We had some great food, some great cocktails and a bit of a late night. And then it was up for breakfast and a look around the impressive V&A Design Museum to end what was an incredible few days in Carnoustie country. 